be announcing our Think Reality um, software platform, as well as our Think Reality A6 headset. Um, so with both of these, we're looking to provide solutions to different enterprises who want to use augmented reality to do things like training or um, streamlining workflows and things like that in environments that aren't necessarily the best to have a PC just sitting there. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine things like the medical industry, if somebody's like doing surgery or whatnot, or, uh, you know, like um, automotive industry, like people fixing cars and whatnot. Obviously, if you have oil all over your hands, it's not, not conducive to uh, having a laptop there with a PDF open. Um, so we're offering a platform for companies to be able to build their own applications to do these kinds of things um, in a much more streamlined way. Okay. And so with our software platform in particular, um, we're saying that's environmentally agnostic. So you'll be able to create apps that are both, you know, usable online as well as offline. Okay. Um, it'll be cloud agnostic. So if you are a company that uses Amazon Web Services, it'll work with that. It'll work with other cloud services. Um, it will be device agnostic. So you don't even necessarily have to use it with our headset. Um, it'll work with other ones. So the components are what here? You've got this, and then what is that? So I can get to that in a second. Oh, okay, so I thought yeah. they were together. Okay, so this yeah. is just one component. So we're doing two, two separate kind of, um, two, two, kind of a two-fold situation. So we have both the software platform okay. as well as this hardware here. So this hardware is all one thing. Okay. Um, and so with our ASICS headset here, um, so with this, this is all working together. So all of the computing is actually done in this compute box here that you're gonna wear on like a belt clip or an armband. Okay. Um, so what that allows us to do is alleviate a lot of the uncomfortability of having a much heavier headset. So we were able to get our headset weight down to 360 grams. So that's a little bit under 13 ounces. Um, so something that's very light and much more comfortable for somebody to wear to for an extended period of time. Um, also with this headset, so it's using fisheye cameras, depth sensors, as well as a 13 megapixel RGB camera in the center um, to be able to use SLAM technology to kind of map the room around you and whatnot. Um, and then this also has speakers as well as microphones. So you'll be able to use voice controls okay. depending on whatever uh, company app that they designed um, what, for input. Um, it'll also work with gestures um, as well as using eye movements to input information, so gaze. Um, and then also using a 3DOF controller um, will also be an option to control uh, applications with that. Um, yeah, so that is coming um, later later this summer. This particular unit here, can we talk a little bit more about this? Is it kind of like a uh, is it kind of like what we saw earlier? Or no, it's not. It's not anything like the um, the nano or okay. tiny or anything like that. It is specifically built to power this headset here. So it has a um, 6,800 milliamp hour battery in it. So we're saying it's about four hours of battery life okay. um, for the whole unit. So you do need this in order to power this. So yes, they, exactly. they, they work together. Exactly. Okay. Um, and so this also has a removable battery. Um, and you'll actually be able to use the headset while it's charging too. Okay. So it just makes it a more streamlined experience rather than oh, I ran out of battery and you have to charge it for another couple hours. So it just makes the workflow much easier for somebody who's using this kind of technology. Is the uh, the UI similar to what we're used to seeing what Microsoft is doing? Is that something that Lenovo is building on your own or is it kind of a platform that you're shared with Microsoft? So it's it's our own platform. Okay. Um, so that's part of the announcement is that we will be um, having our own software platform for people to develop on. Okay. With that, so it's not going to be like Windows or any other competitors. It's okay. Be, um, I think there's some advantages that we've uh, stated in the press release, like it's a lot of kind of one-stop shop of adding different 
SDK elements and APIs and things like that um, for companies to customize their own applications. And this is something that you would require some level of consultation with Lenovo? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You have to look at the organization, the need, and then spec it out. It's not something that, just to be clear, a consumer can come in and say, hey, I want to build this out, unless you're like a developer, for instance. Yeah, I think we're still exploring how that's working. Um, okay. Right now, we're doing a trial run with these, with uh, Airbus, for example. For like but, yeah, the maintenance I mean, crew or... Um, I mean, I, I can see it being very know. useful in that area where if you're doing maintenance on an mm-hmm. airplane, you would, I mean, you pull up a schematic or, yeah. you know, have a voice chat or whatnot. I don't so. have the specific No, no, it's, it's fine. I'm I, assuming it's something like something that, in that area. it's more hands-on right. type um, work. But, like, for example, you're not going to be able to go to, like, Lenovo.com yeah. and just purchase a headset sure. with that. It's going to be more kind of going through um, contracts and things like that. So to recap, when is it launching? So end of or late summer. Late summer availability pricing still be to, still de- to, to be, be determined. determined. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah.